one? Great to see you all tonight um, here on our Teaching Tuesday, uh, part of our communion service, partly prayer. And it's great to have Dean and Helen Houston with us tonight. This is Dean and Helen's first time here in the church. Well, I mean in a service. Uh, they've been here a few times before, meeting up and, and things like that. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but we really welcome them in the name of the Lord. And as always, we want to welcome the folks that are watching online. Beyond the camera, we know that there's folks there that are watching and uh, who click in every week who are just the extended family here of the church and we really welcome you as well. And we trust that you'll be blessed uh, through our live online service. And so we're going to begin our service tonight. On Sunday morning past, we introduced a new song. New song to us only recently has um, I Sing Worship downloaded it. Uh, and we have managed to get the whole of it. It's called His Mercy Is More. And uh, I know that the folks enjoyed singing it. If you don't know it, you just follow the words and just kind of mime it. If you get too high or too low, don't be worrying if you trip yourself up or you're the person next to you. Um, but it is a lovely song. And so we're going to change positions. We're going to stand together. We're going to sing it from the screen and worship the Lord. Okay, come on, let's stand together, please, and sing. His mercy is more, followed by the hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. What love could remember No wrongs we have done Our nations all-knowing He counts not their son Thrown into a sea Without bottom or shore Our sins, they are many His mercy is more Praise the Lord His mercy is more It's a lovely song. And so we're just going to sing now this lovely song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. It's really a testimony of every believer, isn't it? Born again of God's Spirit, Blessed Assurance. This is my story. And we've all got a story of God's saving grace and keeping power. So come on, let's really sing it out in praise to the Lord. Blessed Assurance. Yes. 
Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, branches of God, born of the Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, raising my Savior. to be here tonight, isn't it? It's good to be in God's presence. And we're just going to come into an attitude of prayer. Just would like us to pray tonight, um, just as we begin our service. I know we are going to set a time later on in the service where we will pray and also have communion. Um, but tonight we're thinking of bereaved families. Today we were, we were with the McGibbon family circle who live on the Woodvale Road. And we're just praying for that family that God will really comfort them at this time because Tina has just lost her husband, Ernie, and they've asked me to take the funeral service on Thursday morning. Um, again, we have a big connection with this family because some of the grandchildren actually come along to our youth club. And so just looking at um, the family there and just, you know, just being able to comfort them today and to talk to them. And so want to remember the McGibbon family circle tonight. I would also like us to continue to pray for Derek Sloan. I mentioned Derek on Sunday. I was talking to Gwyneth today. Her daddy still isn't good. He's very frail. He's very weak. Got talking to him briefly. Um, Derek was never one for, you know, being a great conversationalist. You know, he was a quiet, he's a quiet man, but he's a lovely man. And very soft-spoken, and you can just even feel the weakness in his voice as he's speaking. Uh, and so we're just thinking of Derek tonight and young Jonathan doing his exams at the minute and Gwyneth trying to hold down a job and look after her daddy. And there's a lot of stuff going on there. And so we're just going to pray for that family as well, that God will help them at this time. Also, yesterday afternoon, we were contacted by Ruth Manning, who is the daughter of Denzel McElfatrick. Denzel is one of our senior trustees here, and Denzel is in hospital at the minute. He's not well, um, and again, we're just praying for him because 
it's just not a great situation for the family again, not being able to get in to see him. And so we're just praying for Denzel tonight. We're continuing to pray also for Patty Jamison that we mentioned on Sunday, who is seriously ill. And also, late last night, we got a text message from a lady who's over here from Scotland. She's, um, I know some of the folks will know Sandra Elder. Sandra's mum isn't well. Uh, Sandra lives in Kirkcaldy, but her mum lives in Sydney Street West, and she's been overstaying with her mum. Her mum's not well, and Sandra's not well over these last four weeks. And I know she's watching on tonight, and so we're praying for you, Sandra, and we're also praying for your mum as well, who's in the Mater Hospital. Also, a lady that we've been asked to pray for, Violet, who lives locally in the area, who has cancer. Just going to remember this lady also in our prayers tonight. So we're thinking of the sick, the needy, the bereaved, continuing to pray for our own church. And you know, whilst all the bad news, there's a bit of good news because Gloria became a great grandmother today. (laughs) There you are. So we Sean had a baby boy with four names. And I can't remember the first one, never mind the fourth one. So we're just praying that mother and baby are all good. And you can see that just a proud look all over your face there. So there you are. So we rejoice with those who rejoice. And we weep with those who weep. You know, as we thank God for life born into the world, we think of lives that have lost, that have left this world. Some that are about to leave this world. And so it's a mixed bag, isn't it? And so as a community church, we just want to pray for these folks. So would you bow with us, please? And again, I just want to say to the folks that are watching online, if you have a special request, as we pray tonight, you bring your request also before the Lord. And let's just trust him for the answer. And that goes for all of the folks that are here right now. Whatever needs are on your heart, as I pray, you pray alongside. And let's trust God that he will meet us at the point of need. So let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the lovely sense of your presence. We thank you that we can sing tonight, this is my story. We thank you for the story that you have given each one that are saved by God's grace and that are kept by your power. And yes, Lord, our sins, they may, they may be many, but we thank you tonight that your mercy is more. And so, Lord, as we lift our voice in praise and in worship to you, and acknowledge who you are tonight, Lord. We, we boast of your reverence. We are encouraged even when we think of the Lord's prayer. Hallowed, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so, Lord, as we acknowledge you and as we worship you, we do pray for your blessing upon our service tonight, upon every head that is bowed, everyone that is listening on online tonight, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, that you will meet each one at the point of need because there's nothing too hard for you. The one that paints a a sunset every morning who put the stars in, in space knows them all by name. Lord, I know that you can make a way for everyone that is watching on, everyone that is listening here tonight. You can make a way for each one. You can answer prayer. And so I just pray, Lord, that you will hear us. And Lord, as we think of the list of people tonight that we have been praying for. I do pray for the McGibbon family. And I ask, Lord, that you'll comfort Tina and her daughters and all of the grandkids and all of that family. And, Lord, just be all that they need. And even as preparations are made for Thursday, Lord, again, we commit it all into your hand, praying as your word goes forth that you will speak into the hearts of the family. So remember the McGibbon family tonight. And Lord, I pray for Derek Sloan tonight. I pray that you'll remember Derek and you'll remember Gwyneth and young Jonathan. You'll remember that family and you will just help Derek at this time. Lord, minister to him, minister healing, bless him, lift him up. Lord, we just pray for him. I pray for Patty Jamison tonight and I pray for this girl, Violet, tonight. You know them both. Lord, same issue. And I pray, Lord God, that you would remember them in the name of Jesus. Pray for Denzel tonight, Lord. I thank you for him. Such a faithful servant, such a great help, such a great encourager to this church over all of these years. And Lord, he's lying there in hospital. He's frail, he's ill. And I pray, Lord God, would you draw near to him and would you minister to him? Would you bless him? Would you lift him up tonight? We pray 
Lord, I just think of him. Lord, I also think of uh, the, the Pettigrew family, Billy Pettigrew, tonight, Lord. I know that Violet is maybe watching on, Amanda and Robert maybe watching on the broadcast, and we know that they've lost this dear friend, Billy. I know that he's been here in the past to the church services, and he's just passed away today. And Lord, I pray that you'll comfort his mum and all of his family. Lord, we lift them up, the family over there in Scotland. We pray for them in the name of Jesus. Pray for Sandra tonight. Lord, I pray for her that you'll really touch Sandra Elder. Think of her mum in the hospital. Lord, would you remember her? And Lord, would you just give her a touch? We pray for these dear people. Lord, that you would hear us tonight and that you would answer prayer. Lord, we loathe to leave anyone out. But Lord, you know every need, you know every care. We leave them with you. And we pray indeed that you will hear us and that you'll answer our prayers. And Lord, you'll do us good tonight. Lord, I thank you for Dean. And I thank you for Helen. Thank you, that, Lord, that you've made a way that they can be here tonight. I thank you for the encouragement that Dean has been, Lord, to me and to this church, especially over this period of lockdown. Lord, I just thank you for this dear brother. And I just pray, Lord, as he ministers tonight, Lord, that our hearts will be open to receive. Even as he testifies of your saving grace, as he just gives a little, a little profile on the ministry that him and Helen are involved in in Fermanagh, and even as the word of God is open to us, Lord, let us be really inspired and blessed through our brother tonight and through our sister. So, Lord, hear us, and thank you for later on in the service. We'll have that opportunity coming around the memorial board, remembering you, and also taking that time also just to pray. Lord, hear us tonight, we pray, giving you thanks for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand again and we're going to sing again this lovely song that we've been singing in recent weeks. Behold our God seated on the throne. Come let us adore him. Come on, let's stand together and let's sing it out. Nothing can come 
of sinful man. God eternal, humble to the grave. Jesus Savior is in now to reign. Behold our God, seated on His throne. Come, let us adore Him. Behold. That's a lovely song, isn't it? Lovely just to be able to worship and to praise the Lord. Let me give you a couple of announcements before we invite Dean up to the platform to preach and uh, just to share a testimony and give us a bit of an update on the work, Dean. Thank you. Um, Just want to give out some announcements. This coming Sunday um, at 11.30, again, we'll be here for our morning service, recorded live on Facebook, later updated uh, on to YouTube and you're more than welcome to join us. It's great to see the church filled on a Sunday mornings. We're delighted to see what God is doing amongst us. Great to see the young coming in. Great to see families coming in and the Lord just blessing the work at this time. We're really, really thrilled and as you know, we're now, we've now entered our, uh, the book of Nehemiah. This will be our third week um, and this week we're going to have a look at a secret survey at night time. And uh, what's all that about? Well, you need to come on Sunday morning and let God's word speak into your heart. Why not at the daytime? Well, I don't know. He just done it at nighttime when it was dark and nobody could see him. And um, it's a really interesting story. And so we look forward to bringing the word on Sunday morning. Um, Could I thank the folks for their response regarding Christianity Explored? Um, I mentioned on Sunday past that we really wanted to get things round up as soon as, um, just to have an idea how many numbers have been, uh, you know have enrolled for this six-week course. It starts on the 9th of May, Sunday the 9th of May, just a few weeks away uh, from 6.30 to 7.30. And we've already had 15 names that are on the sheet there which we're delighted with. Uh, And again, I'm saying to you folks, please, if you haven't put your name down and you want to do this, then you really need to sign up tonight because we are now oversubscribed. We only have 12 books. We really set aside 12. So we now need to buy in more, bring in more. And uh, so we really want to round it up. I'm going to have to phone uh, through to to the publisher and get some more sent through to us. Um, that's the reason why we wanted at least two weeks in advance to get that sorted. didn't want to leave it the last minute. Somebody came forward and would say, we would like to do this, and then you would have no handbook and nothing to give you. Uh, so if you want to do this, you need to sign that tonight. If nobody else signs it, then I'll take it that that's the numbers confirmed. I'll phone the guy tomorrow uh, from the, book, the, the good book company, Robin Furbin. He'll send us through some more over the next couple of weeks, and we'll be ready to go 
on the 9th of May. I know that Mark Armstrong is really looking forward to coming up from Bangor. Him and Lorraine are going to come up along with Gary here in the church looking after uh, those six weeks. And you will learn so much uh, through this wonderful course. You'll be blessed. Uh, so it starts on Sunday the 9th. So thank you for the really, really good response that we've had to this thus far. So that's on Sunday the 9th of May. And then on the 11th of May is our annual general meeting, which is two weeks away. And again, this is open to the members of the church and also friends of our church that come here regularly uh, and you're interested in the work here. It's not a closed shop. You're more than welcome to come along that night. Uh, Gloria will give a financial report on how, how things have been right through the lockdown, the various uh, things that have happened during the course of the year. And it's marvellous how God has been so faithful to the work here uh, during this period. Uh, and we'll also give an update on the work, what has been happening, and also thinking about the future, uh, and stuff giving us an update about the work here, and also an update about across the way. Some of the folks have been asking me, has there been any update about Heather Street uh, coming into our hands? Well, we're just praying about it still, that God will make it happen, uh, but hopefully then we'll have a bit more information. Uh, and just generally, let us know exactly what's been going on here and some of the changes, some of the things that are going to be happening here um, over the next number of months. So I think that's all of our announcements out of the way. I think that's we're all covered, we're all up to date. Um, <clears throat> it's a great privilege for me to invite to the platform Dean Houston. It's lovely to have Dean and his wife Helen. Just before he comes, um, it's really important that you know this, folks. That I mean, I've known Dean probably now about 10 years, maybe. Uh, and we, we would meet regularly. We've put on weight together, having lunches and, and so forth over that period. And uh, always had great times of fellowship. Uh, Dean, to be honest, is like a mentor figure in my life. I have to say that. Been a great encouragement. You know, somebody may ask the question, well, who pastors the pastor? Well, this man has pastored the pastor for the last 10 years but especially during this last year, right through the lockdown from last March when we were shut down here for, what, 20 weeks doing online stuff, and then from the new year, another, what, 12 weeks, wasn't it, or something like that, where we were closed down. But there wasn't a week that went by that I didn't receive a phone call from Dean Houston just to phone us and ask us how we were, how the work was doing, and at the end of every phone call, he would take the time to pray with me over the phone. And do you know what? I've really appreciated that, thing. And God bless you abundantly. Thank you. And I would like you to welcome him tonight. God bless Dean and Helen. Come on forward. Let's give him a real welcome here in the church. I know I'm not allowed to hug you, and I would love to, but God I'll bless you, you Dean. Give, give me an elbow. God bless you. Jonathan, thank you so much. It, it really is lovely to be with you this evening. Uh, of course, I, I, I know the welcome well because I've been here many, many times. And, and we would have gone around uh, initially around the corner and uh, then we've come sometimes uh, across the way. But truthfully, it's been the Ulster Fries that have been the drawing attraction to this handsome man here. And uh, it's been a privilege to walk with you this, this past year, really, Jonathan, and to follow what God has been doing in this uh, remarkable church, a lighthouse in Belfast. That's what I class the welcome because you're doing mighty things, whether it's here within the building or with those of you who are joining us this evening. It's fantastic. God's hand is on this place. And yes, I have too been listening to hear about Heather Street as well and, and join you in praying as your hearts desire to expand more and more, not for your good, but for the kingdom of God, for the glory of God, for the honor of God, to behold our King who is seated on his throne. That's who we're here to worship. John said, tell me a wee bit about what you're doing in Fermanagh. Well, truthfully, uh, what we do in Fermanagh is very, very little. 
It's really only there to be cheerleaders. I, I, I worked in a church called Glen Abbey Church, which is up in Glen Gormley, up until uh, six years ago. And the Lord really placed it on our hearts to go down to Fermanagh. And Helen and I went down to Fermanagh, and really we opened our home to, to people who are missionaries, tired missionaries, just to offer them a bit of space. But as you and I do, <laughs> COVID appeared, and, well, that ended that. So a lot of our time is spent on the phone or when we get the opportunity to get alongside my brother for a, a healthy or an unhealthy Ulster Fry. There can never be an unhealthy Ulster Fry, let's be honest. But uh, that gives us a chance to get together. What's our work? Really, it's three things. To pray, to support, and to encourage. Simple as that. And that's what we do down in County Fermanagh. But tonight, I have the privilege of, of talking to you about God's Word. And, and that's really the most important thing that we really want to look at this evening. And if you happen to have a Bible with you, I'd love you to open at John chapter 14. If you're watching on the screen, maybe you've, you can go away and get your phone in or whatever way that you want to just follow the Scripture, which we're going to read in a moment or two. The theme for tonight is this, home, home to glory, home to glory. So if you've got your Bible in front of you, that's great. We're going to read from it in a moment or two. But first of all, let's just talk to our Father God. Let's just pray together. Behold our King seated on the throne. We come to adore you. We come to worship you, Lord Jesus, King of all kings, the one who is the Prince of Peace, the one who reigns, is supreme, is the Almighty. We buy our knees, we buy our hearts, we buy ourselves before you, for you alone deserve the glory and the honor. Thank you, King Jesus, for living, for dwelling among us, and for pointing us in the direction of your Father, our Heavenly Father, Abba God. And as we come this evening to look at your words shortly, we pray by the power and the presence of your living Holy Spirit that you would just move among us, whether we're sitting in a row of two or three, or whether we're alone, or whether we're watching online, whatever way you want to speak to us, we pray that our hearts would be open, our ears would be hearing, our heads would be thinking, but most of all, that we would be in a receptive mood, in a receptive mind, in a receptive attitude to hear what the King of Kings has to say to each one of us. And this we pray in your valiant, triumphant name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Bang, crash, silence. Oh, the pain, the pain that went down the side of my face as the steering wheel from the car went into my cheekbone and the window smashed in on my face. It was January 1972. It was a long time ago. But well do I remember that bang, that crash, and my little car, which rolled across the Craiger Road in East Belfast and stopped at a lamppost. The next thing I heard was, uh, 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 and I was on my way to the Royal Victoria Hospital in Belfast. And when I arrived there, I couldn't see. Glass had gone into the left eye, and the right eye, because my head was cut, all the blood was congealing in my eyes. So I was there, they cleaned me up, they put in 23 stitches into my face, and two weeks later, I returned to work. I worked in the gas department. I was a clerical assistant in Belfast Corporation Gas Department in the Ormo Avenue. If you know where it used to be, it's no longer there now. It's a car park, I think, probably. 
But Bankmore Street was off the end of it, and, and uh, I worked in a little office there. And that particular day that I returned to work, there was a guy by the name of Ronnie, and, and Ronnie came to the window and he knocked the hatch door, and I'd been playing a game of poker. It was lunchtime, and the window went back, and so uh, the guy, Ronnie, said, can I have a word with Dean? And I left the poker, and, and I came to the window, and Ronnie said, I'm glad you're back at work. It's wonderful that you're here. You know, Dean, you could have lost your eye. And I said, you're right, Ronnie. And then he said, what happens if you had lost your soul? Would you have been in heaven or would you be in hell? I took a deep breath and then I heard, Dean, your turn for the poker. And friends, I gambled. I gambled. I turned my back on that man, Ronnie, and I walked away, and I walked away from that moment where I believe God was speaking very clearly to me. I was in trouble almost 50 years ago, and foolishly, so foolishly, I continued to live my life without the Lord Jesus for a further decade. And I'll tell you more about that later on. I was in trouble, friends, and I didn't know it. Job 5 verse 7 says that this, Yet a man is born to trouble, as surely as sparks fly up. Trouble? Trouble? Trouble with a capital T. You see, everyone here has experienced trouble. If I were to come and sit down beside you and spend a bit of time with you and talk to you, more importantly, listen to you and listen to you online, if I was just to take that time and listen to you, I would hear that you have either lived in trouble or presently in trouble, or dare I say it, that trouble is ahead. We get disturbed, we get troubled, we get depressed, we get worried. We may be in trouble physically, health's not so good. Or mentally, can't remember things, get depressed. Financially, we we, we don't have the money, the bills are coming in, we can't meet them. The family issues, and so it piles up and we get weary and we get worn and we get harassed. But if you look at John 14 verse 1, God has promised to us, These words to those of us who are in trouble and conflict. He says this. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Come with me. I want to show you this scene. The scene's quite clear. The eleven are in the upper room. Judas has now left. He's gone off into the dark to betray the Lord Jesus. There is the Lord Jesus alone with this small band of faithful followers. And he knows that each of them are going to be in certain trouble. And this trouble is going to come to them very, very quickly, within hours, within days. And we read in John 13, if you look back to John 13, here the Lord Jesus predicts his betrayer. And you'll see that in verse 21 of chapter 13, where it says this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified. I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. And on up ahead of Jesus was Gethsemane. Here's the one who was fully God and yet fully man. And in Luke 22:44 we see it say, it says these words, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Jesus was Disaffected, not disaffected. Jesus was not disaffected by trouble. Trouble, trouble, trouble with a capital T. Trouble, a betrayer. Trouble, a a denier. Trouble, nine others that were in that room were going to scatter. They were going to flee. They were going to go run away. Only John would be left at the cross there. 
John with Mary. These disciples, they were certainly in trouble. Jesus already told them in John 13, 33, where I am going, you cannot come. Jesus was leaving them. And then we enter into the backdrop of John 14. They were in terrible trouble. And Jesus was telling them in verse 1, don't be anxious. Don't be troubled. Don't be worried. Don't be upset. Don't be alarmed. Don't be disturbed. Verse 1, you believe in God. Believe also in me. There's a question for each one of us. Do you, do you, do you, do you believe in God? Let's read on. Verse 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am there you may be also and where I go you know the way you you know uh, I'll read that again there you may know also and where I go you know and the way you know now let's watch as Jesus introduces the 11 to move away from that glance of temporal turmoil to be replaced by a triumphant terrace of glory. Jesus is introducing these 11 disciples to the mansions of glory, the Father's palace in heaven. Dr. David Gooding, originally from from Belfast, records in a book called The School of Christ. And he puts it this way. Words are inadequate to express the grandeur and the magnificence of the provision of a place in the Father's house on high. Its effect will be perfect and eternal. It is altogether the unaided work and provision of Christ. Brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus, ponder that truth. Your home and my home is being prepared by the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus had to go away. He had to leave the disciples. Why? Something bigger was going to be happening. Something greater was going to be happening. They had witnessed many things over the past three years, but now something greater and bigger was going to happen. But it was going to mean pain. Hebrews 12, 2 tells us this. Looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of of the throne of God. Pain? Yeah. Hardships? Absolutely. Affliction? Jesus faced it all. Jesus died. Jesus was buried. But hallelujah, Jesus rose from the dead. He rose from the dead triumphant. He ascended into heaven. He's seated with the Father in the glory. He's in the glory, the home. The home is in the glory. And Jesus has gone there to prepare a place for you, for you. For you and for me. He's gone. And you know something? He has made a place which he's called a reservation. He's made a reservation for you, for me, for those who love the Lord Jesus. I I remember the date well. It was the 24th of June, 2004. And Helen and I and our two children had been invited to London. And uh, we were there and, and, and some of staff that I had had kindly collected a lot of money and, and arranged for afternoon tea at the Dorchester Hotel. 
Now, the Dorchester Hotel is a very posh place, and I am from East Belfast, and I ain't posh. But we went, and we were all dickied up, looking, washed my face and combed my hair. It needs cut, I know, but we'll worry about that another day. Can't find a barber anywhere. But anyway, here we were, and we went in with our two children, and there was a man at the door, and he had a long coat on and a top hat, but you can understand. And he said, come in, sir. Uh, what are you here for? And I said, we're here for afternoon tea. And he said, not a problem. He said, uh, go down to the, the bottom of the hall there, and there'll be somebody there to meet you. And we went down to the bottom of the hall, and of course, when we arrived there, there's a man standing there, and he said, uh, name. And I went, Dean Houston. And he went, oh, yes, got you here, sir. Follow me. So, of course, I followed him and the family, like little ducks, they, we all four all quacked along, and we got along to, to where, where the man had us seated. And there on the seat, on the table in front of us, was this massive sign which said, Reserved Mr. D. Houston. Fantastic. And this young man then came and he put a, like a napkin over me and then he went over to Helen and he put a napkin over Helen and he said to the children, what would you like? And they went, Coke. And he said, you can have Coke all afternoon. And they thought, happy days. And, and we were there and it was fantastic and, and, we, and we got tucked into some beautiful food. And there were lovely scones and lovely sandwiches and lovely tray bakes. I know you're getting hungry now. But the bottom line was, it was wonderful. It was a great scene. But what did I tell you? Two hours later, it was over. That was it. It was gone. All the food was gone. It was time to leave. It lasted but a few hours. That cannot be compared with the magnificence of heaven. That cannot be compared with the magnificence on high. But at what a price. What a price. The price of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus hung on a cross. The Son of God. The Lamb of God. The one who takes away our sins. The Prince of Peace. To give us his peace. It cost him everything. Now Jesus is preparing a place in heaven for us, for me. Jesus is preparing a room for us, for me. And Jesus is preparing us, he's preparing me for the room. Did you get it? He's preparing the room for us. John records the disciples' master is soon to depart. And yet Jesus gives these heart trouble followers three promises you'll see them verse two verse two says i am going to prepare a place he's going to do something i'm promising you i'm going to do something and then in verse three he says i will come back it's not as if he's just going away he's saying i will come back and again in verse three i will take you to be with me you see Brothers and sisters in Christ, their reservation has been secured. But there's a request for clarification. Look again to scriptures. Verse 5. Here's Thomas speaking. Verse 5 to 7 we'll look at. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would also have known my Father also. And from now on, you will know him and have seen him. He's often, often referred to as doubting Thomas, simply because he questioned, he queried about the resurrection. Well, he, he wasn't there that day when the rest of the disciples were there. I wonder, was he away thinking? I wonder, was he pondering what he'd heard? Or personally, I like to think of him with a slightly different name. I like the title, Thomas the Honest. Honest Thomas. Lord, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? I wonder if you remember days at school. 
I wasn't very bright at school, and, and I remember sitting in classes, like science classes or English classes or French classes, and I'd be sitting there in the class, and I'm thinking, this is all going right over my head. I haven't a baldy notion what that man's saying. I do not know what they're talking about. And maybe, maybe you're a wee bit like that, and you're thinking back to the school days, and you're going, I didn't get it either. Well, when I tell you, I just sat there and I thought, I hope somebody's going to speak up because I'm feeling very silly and I don't want to be stupid. And then I was so glad there was another boy and he put up his hand and said, please, sir, could you, could you go over that mass equation again because I'm not getting it? Or please, sir, could you spell that big long word again because I don't understand it. I, I, I don't understand the meaning of it. I loved guys like that because they were brave and bold enough to put their hand up. They were bold enough to say, I don't understand, I don't, I'm not getting it. Please help me get it. That's Thomas. Thomas the Honest. He spoke up. I don't understand it. What you're telling us? What are you telling us? And he was seeking our, that request to be clarified. So we've seen the reservations secured, the request clarified. But here comes the revelation being declared. Jesus said, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. Shortly, Jesus is going to step out of that scene. He's going to leave that area and he's going to go across the Kidron Valley. And he's going to go across that Kidron Valley. And the betrayal has begun. The denial will soon be happening. Soon, Calvary awaits our king. And Jesus knows that he's going on that journey to Golgotha. Golgotha. Jesus, the way, soon to be impaled. Jesus, the truth, yet all those lies that have been told about him to ensure that he would be taken to Calvary's cross. And Jesus, the life, soon to be lifeless. Jesus in trouble? Well, I'm going to say no, because Jesus had that wonderful relationship with the Father. Jesus came from the glory. Jesus was going to go back to the glory. But Jesus also knew that he was going to face a lot before he had ascended to his Father. Isn't it marvelous to know that Jesus is the way to the Father? Isn't it wonderful to know that Jesus is the truth pointing us to the Father? Isn't it fantastic to know that Jesus is the life that Father God is the one who is the eternal one that we're going to be with if we love the Lord. No crash. No bang. But a silence. And then a joy. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak. But he is strong. Ten years after that road accident, I sat in my car in a lay-by. No, not in East Belfast, but ironically in Fermanagh, two miles from Enniskillen. It wasn't a car accident. It was a time when I met Jesus and I surrendered my all to the one who is the way the truth and the life. The revelation dawned. What happened? That evening, I'd been, a friend of mine had brought me to a, a tent meeting uh, in a place called Kiladees. If you've ever been to the manor house and you know that road up to, to Kesh there, there's a beautiful hotel there now, but there used to be a meeting in the summertime there that the local Christians organized. And I was invited by a, a close friend of ours uh, to come to this meeting. And there was an English man there, and this English man was talking about three men who were in trouble. Boy, were they in trouble. King Nebuchadnezzar had thrown these three into a fiery furnace. You'll know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But they weren't alone. God was with them. And that night as I sat in my car outside Enniskillen, I bowed my soul, my heart, my all, my being to the one who said, 
come. Come as you are. It was 5 to 11 at night. I remember it so well. Because you know why? My grandfather was a, a wee man who got saved when, when many, many years ago through Nicholson's campaign in the 20s over in the Ravenhill Road in Belfast. And he taught me all these wee choruses. Jesus loves me, this I know. Uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Jesus wants me for a something. There's an old one. I, I, all of these are starting to flood back. I sang from Enniskillen to Belfast. Amazing. God's spirit descended in real power. It was amazing. The revelation. Jesus, the one who is the way, pointed me to the Father. I accepted him. Trusted him. Believed him. He's led me for the last 39 years almost. And I'm getting closer to that moment when I'll go home to glory. What a massive change came in my life. One who drank every day of the week. One who filled his head with pornography. And God changed all that. He erased all that. And he can do that for you as he's done it for me. Friends, isn't it wonderful to know Jesus as our Lord and our Redeemer? Isn't that wonderful? It's so wonderful. Our destiny is secured. Our forerunner has gone before us. He is our escort all the way, leading us to the path of glory. Psalm 27, 4 is one of my favorite scriptures. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is, is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and seek him in his temple. The reservation has been secured. The revelation has been declared. And now I rejoice, we rejoice, brothers and sisters in Christ, for there's coming a new a new Jerusalem. There's coming the new heaven, the new earth. I love Revelation 21.3. I will see his face. God is on his throne. I, I worked for 30 years with blind and partially sighted people. And it's funny, you've got Ucell across the way there, John. I had a wee smile. I said to him, there's Ucell, the workshops for the blind, which used to be on the other side of, of the shankle, so they did. And, and, and I worked in a little charity uh, who would have supported them. A uh, man who would have come. But I remember meeting this, this young blind girl who, who uh, had, had lost her sight at birth, actually. And uh, she, was, she went absolutely crazy. And she got herself into a lot of trouble. But she went to the school for the blind at Jordanstown. And she was there in Jordanstown. And there were some house parents who took time. And they prayed with this friend of mine. And they prayed. To, and she came to the Lord. She came to the one who's the way, the truth, and the life. And you know, if she was here testifying, she would say these words, the first person that I will see will be Jesus. Amen. First person I will see is see Jesus. I'm looking forward to seeing him. Are you looking forward to seeing him? We should be rejoicing, for there's not going to be any more pain, there's not going to be any mourning, there's not going to be crying, there's not going to be any more death. We should rejoice. We'll be pure. I'm fed up sinning. Ah, your Christian sins. Oh, yeah. Christian sins. What about the tongue? What about the eyes? What about the thoughts? And so on and so forth. I'm fed up. I'm looking forward to being pure. Matthew 5, 8 says this. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Not good. I'm going to see him. I'm going to be pure. I'm going to be like him. 1 John 3, 3 says this, but we will know that when he appears, we shall be like him and we shall see him as he is. Friends, if you know him, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. We're going home to glory. Romans 5, 8, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, for the wonderful love he has promised promised for you and for me though we have sinned he has mercy and pardon pardon for you and for me come home come home 
Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, O sinner, come home. See, God is preparing a place for us, and he's preparing us for the place. So, brother and sister in Christ, whether you're here, welcome, church, or whether you're online and you know and love the Lord, never give up. Never lose heart. One day we're going to be with him forever. We're going to be pure. We're going to be holy. The best is yet to come. We're going home to glory. Amen. Amen. Let's just pray together. Father, we thank you for your great goodness in showing us the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you that you showed it in your Son, our Saviour Jesus, Redeemer and Friend. And Father, I just want to pray over all who are watching either online or are here in the Welcome Church that each one will know the love of God, know the holiness of God, and know that you are preparing us all, those who are yours, for that place in heaven, and that you have a place for us and a place where we will be with you for eternity. But until then, help us to be faithful to you, loyal to you, walking with you, walking after you, and giving you all the praise and all the glory, for you alone are worthy. And we make our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jonathan. that lovely lovely message thank you very much Dean thank you for coming along tonight lovely to have yourself and Helen God making the way possible that you were up in Whitehead instead of down in Fermanagh and you're able to come and minister listen what about singing that lovely song glory can we get that up what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer come on let's stand and sing it Worship and praise the Lord together. Come on. Can we get that, Gloria? Thank you. I know I'm kind of just jumping that on you here. Come on, let's sing it out. What a friend we have in
And again, we just thank Dean for coming along and minister. And we trust that the folks that have watched online with everyone else here tonight, that you've been really blessed and you've been ministered to and encouraged. And we look forward again, God willing, to having you with us on Sunday morning, joining us as we study um, and continue to study the book of Nehemiah. So God, Nehemiah, and God bless you, and we trust that you'll really enjoy the rest of your week. Amen.